Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are general messages for the sign of Pisces in the month of November 2018. What's up, Pisces? How you doing? Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everything in your life is going fabulously. Listen, Pisces, I'm sorry. <laughs> These are coming out pretty late in the month. But uh, as I've told Capricorn, Sagittarius, and Aquarius before you, I'm just a normal old lady. Well, not old, but I'm a normal lady. <laughs> and, you know, I have a job. I have other projects that I get involved in. I got the private readings. I got I got stuff to do. So I do apologize that these are late. Please, 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 please forgive me. Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, happy Thanksgiving for those who will be celebrating next month uh, here in the States and anywhere else in the world. Hopefully you guys have a fabulous time. Uh, I've gone ahead and shuffled off camera, so that's your main spread there. Now we're going to get your outcome and your overall energy. Once all those cards are out and they're lying face up on the table, that's when the reading will begin. You can check for the timestamp for that in the description box below. Down there also is information on how to get a private reading with me if you feel so inclined, okay? All right, Pisces outcome, November 2018, please. Ooh, there it is. Ooh. Bottom of the deck is the overall. Let's see what else you've got. Hello. Ooh, gosh, what's going on? <laughs> gosh. Okay, now we looked on the screen. A little bit of a focus problem. Come on, come on. Yeah. Okay, a little better. There we go. All right. Uh, hmm. Where's Pisces in November 2018? Please show me Pisces in November 2018. Where's Pisces? Okay, right there. All right, Pisces, you come into November with the Ten of Swords. Ay, Dios mío. <laughs> Listen, I know, I know. It's been hard. It's been difficult. My gosh, has it been painful. Okay, so uh, Pisces, you're in your feels, you're in your pain and your sorrow. And okay, I shouldn't say it in those ways. Some of you are not feeling necessarily sorrowful or you're not literally focusing on your pain. But there is this feeling that you're deeply dissatisfied or you're deeply hurt. You're deeply betrayed. Something is just, you're feeling something deeply. And it's not pleasant. That's the point. So it could be sadness, if not sorrow or pain. It could be a deep sadness. Um, and f I'm feeling like for some of you, it could be tied to a specific person that has made you feel this way. Or a certain um, aspect of a relationship, but I feel this is more of like a general, I got the blues kind of feeling. I feel life has done this to me. Like my lot in life, like my, the hand I've been dealt me has given me this feeling. Um, and in some cases it is, it does, it, you feel betrayed, you feel left for dead or abandoned in some cases. Uh, others of you feel defeatist as if you'll never win, you'll never be happy, you'll never find whatever you're looking for. <laughs> Insert you two lyrics here. <laughs> uh, when I still have ever found what I'm looking for. Like, there's this feeling of when is this going to end? When is this feeling of not being satisfied, not being happy, not feeling loved or valued going to end and for some of you this is a lot there's a lot of you having different perspectives or different takes on this energy others of you this is like a about self value and self-appreciation and self-love you don't appreciate yourself you could be an amazing person pisces people tell you every day but on the inside you feel like this you feel like totally like 
nah, man, I'm dead. Some of you, which is very interesting for Pisces, but you know, it's not beyond you. Some of you feel kind of dead inside. Not as if you don't have any emotions, but as if you are, there's no coming back or coming out of this, this feeling of not having connection to the world around you or connection to the people around you. There is just this you feel disconnected, you feel disappointed, you feel sad, you feel, uh, in some cases, very few, but in some cases you feel angry. But, you know, a Pisces, ang <laughs> anger from a Pisces is not usually very rageful. It's usually an anger at, <sighs> it's like being angry yet sad at the same time, like an angry sad, angry tears, but not, okay, not in, <laughs> Like, you would, I feel many Pisces fluctuate between being angry and sad, angry and sad, angry and sad, angry and sad. And a lot of times those two, you are a sign of duality. Those two things exist at the same time. They kind of blend together sometimes. Anger and sadness for you, Pisces. And that can be a very hurtful or painful way of existing or feeling about a certain thing or a certain situation or a certain relationship or person. Is just like, ah, oh, I just, like, <laughs> mm, oh, is that it? Okay. Maybe some of you are having an issue or, or you're frustrated because you want to be completely angry with the person or completely angry at a situation, but then you become sad about it and you become sort of uh, remorseful or, or it's weird. It's like you can't fully commit to being angry about it and you can't fully commit to being sad about it either. And so you just end up feeling like this, like you've self-sabotaged yourself or you've stabbed yourself in the back or you've hurt yourself. You somehow laid yourself down on the ground and st stuck all these swords in your own back. So it's, it's weird and you're coming in like that. So it's not always, but I feel like for most of you, that is like a very, this is, this is hinging on something from your past, maybe even your deep past, maybe not even your recent past. And I say that because the tens usually represent something that has culminated, that has reached its highest point of, of, uh, effectiveness or, 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 uh, importance or, or impact. And now you're going to turn down. You're on the downturn of it. You're on the downhill slope. And what I'm feeling is that's true for the most part. Whatever, wherever the, whenever, thank you, whenever the inception point was of whatever this is talking about, it happened a long time ago. But... It stays with you. It has stayed with you. You can't shake it. And this is a time where, you know, Pisces, you can deflect. You can avoid. You can turn a blind eye or turn a deaf ear to things that bother you and get on with the show. Like, you're very resilient in that way. You know, you dwell... But then you have moments of like, I'm not dwelling anymore on this. This is done. You're just back in this dwelling point where it's like, gosh, here I am again thinking about that person from whoever, however long ago, that situation, that loss, in some cases that death. Uh, and it just, it's come back. And the thing about you, Pisces, is when you recall, it's fresh. Like it could be a memory from... 20 years ago, but the memory is fresh. And so that's what I feel. It's like, that's why this is so important is because, or, and, and that would kind of explain why you're, you're angry and sad at the same time. And you're, you're, you're feeling multiple things at once is because look, the, your logical mind is telling you this happened ever, however long ago, Pisces, it doesn't affect us anymore. It shouldn't affect us anymore. Like you're logically thinking, I should have let this go by now. It shouldn't be affecting me anymore, but it does. And that is really upsetting to you. Anger, frustration, sadness, depression, whatever. It can be, it will manifest itself differently in each of you. But 
the point is you can't shake this thing. You can't shake this feeling. You can't shake the memory. And that's where that whole, well, I guess I better get used to it is kind of also at play here. For many of you, you feel like, well, this is how it's going to be. You know, I've that thing that I'm feeling, feeling and thinking about happened 20 odd years ago. I'm 48 now. <laughs> I guess I'll just never be able to let it go. And so you're kind of feeling like I got a shitty hand dealt to me because this happened and I can't get over it. It keeps invading my mind. It keeps coming back into my into my consciousness. So you feel, like I said, defeatist. You feel like life is like playing some kind of practical joke on you. And the joke never ends. And you're like, listen, I want to be over this. It's, it's so long that that happened. So long ago that that happened. Can't I be done with it? Apparently not. For some, for some reason, apparently not. Could be your makeup as a Pisces, you would be naturally empathic and, and, and empathetic, <laughs> empathic and oh God. empathic and possibly psychic for some of you. You would have strong intuition. You have a strong alignment to the things that other people can kind of put to bed easily and quote unquote get over, but they don't really get over it. They just suppress it. You are not a suppressor, really, you're not. <laughs> you would you like to play that game and, and you would like to have those that tendency in you sometimes, but truly you're not a suppressor. You're not somebody who can heal through suppression. And and nobody really can, but like <coughs> excuse me. It just would never serve you to to try to suppress something. That's where your your big bit of bravery comes from. Excuse me. <coughs> Is the fact that you do face things repetitively. God, am I about to have a coughing fit? I hope not. Hold on. I think I'm good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, right, your your bit of bravery comes from you can face things over and over again. It's it's sort of like a blessing and a curse. Excuse me, because it hurts to go back. I, I hold on. Okay, Pisces, I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so it's like a blessing and a curse for you to be able to go back and face a situation or face a memory of pain, of loss, of anger, or, or depression, whatever. You can face that over and over again. The beauty of it, to me, from what I've understood about you guys, is that when you do that, each time, or almost every time, you gain a different piece of clarity, you gain a different piece of understanding, and then you're able to let go of a part of it. Like, <laughs> if you want to think about it, like... Unfortunately, Pisces, you would be a hoarder of bad memories and hurtful memories and things like that. And what we know of hoarding is it's not good. You know, certain things you need to throw them away and certain things you can hold on to because of sentimental value or functionality. But in general, it's not good to be a hoarder. Now, from what I know, there are two approaches to... to, to, to dealing with a hoarder of any type do a total cold turkey clean out throw it all out at one time and then start over kind of thing or to piecemeal it out to get rid of the junk slowly over time as to not insert new trauma into the already broken well not broken but the already affected person's life so Pisces you would be the latter. You don't throw it all away at one time. You simply can't. It would be too traumatic for you. So over time, you go back to the pile of junk, the bad memories, this thing that you're hoarding in your life, in your mind, in your consciousness, whatever, in your heart, wherever. And you go back and you look at it, you look over what you have and you're like, oh man, I gotta do something about this. This is, this is hurting my life. This is in 
this is invading my life. This is preventing me from doing whatever I want to do here or, or going here and doing that. And so then you're like, okay, I'm going to get rid of it. And you talk yourself up and you're like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to throw it all away. And then you're like, no, I can't. And then you are logical or methodical in your approach. And then you're like, okay, I can take this out. I don't know about this yet. Let me hold on to that for a minute. And that's where like you slowly chip away at this thing that just keeps resurfacing for you. And for some of you, this is like an acknowledgement of something. Some of you, this is an acknowledgement of a certain loss and how deeply it has affected you uh, and how it's going to take even more work to sort of heal that loss. Others of you, this is like about <clears throat> a relationship or a, a of any type, romantic, family, I don't care. But it's about a relationship that is tense, that is tense, that has a lot of uh, volatility to it. And so maybe you regularly have disagreements or arguments with a person and you have to come back to this person for whatever reason or, or they come back to you and you try to mend this thing, but you know it's like a band-aid, it's not like a full-fledged heel. And so eventually, for some of you, this is like a slow lead up to a, a severing of a relationship, you know, a breakup or, you know, having to move out, a separation, I don't know. And you don't like that idea. Whatever this thing is that keeps coming back, you don't like it, but I think you know it's going to continue until that junk pile is reduced to nothing and it's done. And, you know, you move on to something else that needs help in your life. And again, it's different than other people, other 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 uh, zodiac signs or temperaments that they can just do it, just get rid of it and act like it never happened. Pisces, I don't know any of you that act like anything never happened. I, I mean, I've yet to meet a Pisces that doesn't feel affected by something that happened previous. I haven't met one of you yet. If you are out there, introduce yourself to me because I want to meet you because you're a rarity, but every Pisces that I know, again, it's like a, it's like a blessing and a curse. You, there's, to me, there's, as, as a casual observer of a Pisces, there's a interesting beauty or uh, utility in being able to go back to your pain and pinpoint the key aspects that really affected you. Like, it's like a, it's like a diagnosis, like a good diagno di diagnostic tool. If I, if you know that this person said that to you in 1978 and it's 2018 and you're still thinking about it, that's good to me than sitting with a therapist or sitting with your friend over a glass of Chardonnay going, you know, I just, I never felt beautiful and not knowing why. A Pisces would know, oh, in 1978, my dad said I was really fat and I had pimples and I would never have a boyfriend. Now you know why you have this complex about yourself. You've identified the problem. You're way better off than some other person who's just like, I never feel pretty. And they are, have all this shit going on with them. At least for you, Pisces, you know the root of your issues. You guys know the root. So that's important. And that's where that comes in. Thank you. Very good. <clears throat> so Hangman comes right below your starting position in the Ten of Swords. And the hangman is that. He's, he gets to the root of the situation. And he gets, he gets there by doing a lot of self-reflection and a lot of hanging around. Like, in his idle time. He's... Not in his idle time. In the times where he's caught up. Like, his ankle is caught up there on that, on that branch. Or whatever. He has nowhere else to go. He's tethered to his problem, so to speak, or he's tethered to, uh, he's, he's meant, meant, he is made to hang in this position, which is not comfortable. It's not easy, but as you can see, he has that enlightenment around him, that, that sort of luminous light around his head. So in the middle of an uncomfortable position, in the middle of an uncomfortable posture, uncomfortable situation, uncomfortable relationship, uncomfortable conversation, you gain some type of enlightenment and clarity about yourself and clarity about your situation. It's painful or and uncomfortable to, to do it this way, but Pisces, it's kind of your bag. It's kind of your shtick. It's kind of what you do, if I'm honest. 
and it makes sense to me in so many levels. You're a ruler of the ruler of the twelfth house. You rule the 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 house that moves into the underground and into the underworld, dreams, illusions, all that kind of stuff. It makes sense. A dream and an illusion can be both blissful and terrifying. Yeah, I mean, we have two different words, dream and nightmare, but it both happens under the same circumstance. You're asleep. So in either, in that position, not saying this is literally happening when you're asleep, but let's say that was the position of the hangman. He's asleep. He could have a great dream or he could have a nightmare. The, the, but the position of him is the same. So I, I hope you get what I'm saying. Again, there's there's a certain beauty or this great ability that you have to deal and grapple with the pain like so many other signs so many other people with different temperaments and, and 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 attributes to themselves they would just run for the hills they would deflect they would they would project they would become tyrants they would become all these things you roll with those punches so well i admire you truly and so that's what's going on here you are dealing with your own crap by being in a comfortable situation, you are going to gain some type of clarity, some type of understanding about yourself, about what that person or what that situation was and how it how it impacted you going forward, how it has impacted you, you know, for the past 15, 20, 50 years. I don't know. You're going to be able to gain something from this. And like I said, this is something that you kind of are used to. Like, I'm kind of telling you stuff you already know. This this feeling comes to you, maybe not often, but it comes to you often enough that you recognize it. Like, you see it coming a mile away. Like, oh, here comes that, that seasonal blues I get. Or here comes my my yearly reminder from my dad that I'm not pretty enough or I'll never have a husband, even though I've been married for 18 years. You know, whatever. You know it's coming. So when you see it coming, you kind of get in this posture anyway. You're like, all right, well, here I go. Let me go ahead and ruminate over the past, ruminate over what I have lost or, or what I have felt that has hurt me. And let me see what I can learn from it this time around. Okay. And hmm. Yeah, okay, so then up here, because that's that's easy to talk about that because he keeps coming up. So up here across from you, you've got the moon card, your own card, the card of the card, the card of Pisces. And Pisces, like I said, your card or the moon card is linked to your attributes of dreaminess, illusion, uh sometimes misinformation or missing information if not yes thank you missing information so that is key right now there's missing information going on that is linked to your pain that is linked to this anguish or this frustration or sadness that you feel whatever your amalgamation of emotions is it's it's linked to this feeling of having missing information not having all the pieces not having all of the facts and figures correct or, or revealed to you just yet because that is also a part of it. It's, it's like the moon card, lots of things are in shadow. The moon is in our solar system illuminated by the sun. Without the sun, the moon would not shine at all. So there's a dimmer, more passive illumination going on here. You can find things by the moonlight, sure, but not as efficiently as if you had found them in the sunlight. Does that make sense? So there might be a half understanding, a half um, revelation that you have. You don't have all the pieces. You might not have all the pieces anytime soon, but there is this perseverance with it. The moon is about cycles as well. So like I said here, as much as you... How can I say this? Because this is about cycles and because you can see this coming a mile away and you are familiar with this energy, you're familiar with this experience, and this is about cycles, basically, ooh, thank you. I, and I don't know if I can really articulate this, but they gave me a, a strong image. Imagine you're in a pitch dark room, 
pitch, pitch Dark. A room you're semi-familiar with, but, you know, you don't know enough about. So maybe a room in somebody else's house, or maybe, like, you know, a room or a place in public that you've been to a few times, but you don't know the ins and outs of. And imagine it's pitch black. You can't see a thing. You can't see your hand in or your own face. But occasionally, on a, on, a, on a timer almost, a light comes on and you can see everything in the room. Or you can see most things in the room, let's say. And so if you want to go over there and grab whatever, you know that the lights are going to come on and I'm going to go over there and I'm going to grab this thing. And then that happens, you grab the thing and the lights go off again. And so you wait and you're like, okay, I think I also saw uh, a hat over there. I also think I saw some glasses on a bookshelf. I need those. So it's like this idea of I know I'm going to see something a little more clearly soon and when I do, I need to act. I need to grab it. I need to take it in and, and take it home with me or, you know what I mean? So this idea of illumination through cycles is what I'm feeling with this moon card right next to that Ten of Swords. It's not the easiest way because, of course, like I said, you could just turn the light on or if it was sun, if it was total sunlight, you would be able to see everything and grab what you needed and leave within like a minute or two this method is not the most effective but it is also not the worst as in remaining in complete darkness forever over this okay there will be some insight that you can gain it might not be all that you want it to be it might not be done in one shot it might not be one conversation that you have with a person or one interaction you have or one session if this is a, i'm not seeing that specifically but for some of you maybe this is about going and working on yourself actively so it's about going to therapy it's about going out and getting into new hobbies and trying to make yourself feel better or you know exercise your demons some other type of way and one time excuse me <clears throat> one time doing that is not enough you will have to do it repetitively there's a lot about repetition in your reading and when you do that you follow this cycle you get into this new pattern you get into this new habit whatever it is you get into this death card energy. Death card, card of Scorpio. So there might be a Scorpio of significance in your life, but it does not have to be. And this card has been coming out a lot for many, if not most, of the other signs. And, oh my God, what's going on? I hope I'm not getting sick. Anyway, so I will tell you, like I've told most all the other zodiacs, Pisces, death is about transformation, significant transformation. Moving from one phase or one state of being into another phase or another state of being. And yours, I don't think, is going to be that drastic. With the other signs, I felt that it was kind of like a night and day or like an actual like turning of the page or closing of the book. I feel that yours is more incremental. I feel that yours is more structured or tiered. Like step up, step up, step up. And, you know, eventually go to wherever the hell you're going. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I don't feel that it's a it's a downgrade or a step down I hope that makes sense to you like this feels progressive it does feel like change incrementally and it might not be to your satisfaction it might not be um as quick or as efficient as you would like it to be or as uh, noticeable or significant as you would like it to be but I do feel it's like significant enough that you will know it you will feel it, but it won't be like as, it won't be as, um, no. Yeah, like the change is there. It's just not as drastic as maybe you would like. And maybe that's because you're looking at other people or you're looking at other, uh, similar situations or people who are involved in your situation, but they're handling it a different way. And there might be... Sorry to say, there might be like a little bit of jealousy in your, a little bit of green eye going on with you, Pisces, where you're like, well, Barbara or Jim is just feeling so okay with this. I wish I could feel that way. So if, if there is something about not being satisfied with the change and how it happens or when it happens or to what degree it happens, it might be because you are... Again, in this energy of, well, I guess this is just how it's got to be. I guess this is what happens when you're dealt the hand that I've got in life is that you just can't 
be, you know, transformed uh, as as quickly as others. And so there's like a little bit of like a... Uh, how do you describe that? Like, not disappointment, but just like... Uh, annoyed. Like you're annoyed. Exactly. It, 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 not... Not exhausted. What is that word? I'm not going to be able to think of it. I hope you get what I'm saying. Just like over it. <laughs> You're like oh, over this thing. It's like, oh, here I go again. Being me. <laughs> not being completely done working on this thing. You know, it's like that. All right. So that's your main four. Uh, triplets come out sometimes in my readings. They especially were coming out in July or August or something like that. And they usually represent either a separate storyline or something to emphasize in the four cards. And let's see what we have. Right. All right. So I think this would be emphasizing a bit of the Ten of Swords in a bit of the Moon card. And, oh, I picked these up, but yeah, of course. Because, you know. <laughs> All right, so paired together, you have the Hermit card and the Four of Wands in reverse. And like I said, I feel like these two would be working to sort of emphasize what's going on in your Ten of Swords energy and a little bit uh, with your Moon card energy. And I think this is sort of like... It could, well, yeah, because it's cycles, right? So I feel like right now you're kind of on the upswing or the uptick of your cycle that you're realizing your issues or you're realizing this thing is still bothering you and so you're going back and you're dealing with your shit, right? I feel that this is what has happened before and what might be happening for some of you, if not many of you, upcoming. Because again, it's like a cycle. It's like an on off, on off, on off, back and forth kind of thing. And that's so this is like informing both your past and your future, uh, Pisces. And previous to this upswing moment, you have been <sighs> you've been not doing your work, not doing your homework, neglecting your house neglecting your home life, neglecting your home as in your center, as in yourself. You haven't really given yourself the proper time of day, the proper self-care, the proper nurturing, the proper uh, time and investment. You've been kind of on the go. You've been kind of, because the, the, the hermit card, when he's upright, he's a, he's an intentionally slow, methodical, and patient energy. In this reverse position for you, I feel all of that's out the window, and it's been like a go, go, go energy, or a, oh, I don't have time to stop. I don't have time to think about that. I don't have time to, to invest in myself, or invest in this circumstance, or invest in this problem. So there's been an avoidance going on, and with the four of wands right next to it in reverse, that deals with your home life, your center, your core, who you are or how you feel about yourself and your and your, your self-esteem in a lot of ways and, and your care for yourself or it involves your home life, your actual physical house or the the structure, the, the, the family structure that you live in that you call home, your wife, your husband, your kids, your roommate, your whoever you live with, whatever. And so there's just been sort of like this, ah, I'll get to it or ah, I don't want to face that right now. So you could have had issues in a marriage that you've kind of turned a blind eye to and been like, your, your spouse is talking to you. Listen, Pisces, we need to get on top of this. And you're just like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And you're like walking away. You're looking, or you're like saying yes just to get them off your back. You're saying yes just to shut them up. <laughs> you're, you don't intend to do whatever the hell they asked you to do. You don't intend to fulfill your obligations you know uh you this energy has been very avoidant has been very deflective has been very uh ignorant like playing ignorance like playing oh i didn't know like and it could come down to something as simple as oh did you do did you pay certain bill and you say yes and you're like oh on the inside you're like i didn't pay that shit oh no and you like are having to kind of cover up for your not lies but your misdirection 
You know, you you said yes to something in order to get someone off your back, or you you convinced or you you told yourself you would do this thing by this date. The date comes, you didn't do it, so now you have to ca do catch up work because you procrastinated. It's like that. The hermit, like I said, when he's in the upright, is very slow and methodical, and he gets things done but in this reverse position I feel you've been kind of flippant I feel you've been kind of faster in your reactions or or a little bit more snippy a little bit more biting in some cases and it's been addressed towards your home life or your core so in some cases Pisces what you've had to deal with on your within yourself, your own development, you've ignored and you've avoided. So some of you may have had issues with mm, drinking, overeating, something like that. Some type of behavior that you're like, oh my God, I gotta get, you know, I've packed on 15 pounds in the last, you know, month. I gotta cut it out. I gotta stop drinking so much beer. I gotta stop eating so many cookies at the holiday parties. Because I mean, it's that time of year where everything happens. You got three months in a row. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. You've got all these people bringing in all these lovely goodies and, you know, all these kind of, you know, milestones in your in your workplace are being celebrated and you're just like, hum, 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 hum. and so you've told yourself, all right, this is it. That's it. After Halloween, I had so many Snickers bars, so many Milky Ways, so many Three Musket. I've had all the chocolates. No more. And now it's almost Thanksgiving and you're like, but that pumpkin pie though. But them <laughs> them gingerbread cookies or whatever or ginger snap cookies not gingerbread but ginger snap cookies whatever pumpkin spice cookies i don't know and so you told yourself i'm not gonna eat any more sweets i'm not gonna overindulge on my diet anymore i'm gonna reel it in i'm gonna get tough with myself i'm gonna get back on track and you're like, but then the the tray of goodies comes out this week at work and you're like but wait a minute so there's this essence of not being committed to the 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 com not being committed to the commitments yeah sure not being t uh, committed to the goals and the and the parameters of the goals that you've set for yourself or that have been set for you if this is in a relationship maybe your husband or your wife or whoever you date or whoever you live with if it's not romantic says hey listen i want to work on our relationship i want things to get better for us and i think we should go see a therapist or i think we should sit down and talk and check in with each other every once in a while like every every two weeks let's just have a day to ourselves and we spend time together and you're like okay sure and that day comes and you're like oh but i made plans or oh i forgot i have this appointment and it's just like <laughs> You you knew that was coming, so you kind of you mis you misdirected. I don't want to say that you lied because I think when you did agree, both either with yourself or with other people, I think you intended to fulfill your end of the bargain to to fulfill your commitment. But then when it came time to actually act upon that commitment, you were like, ah, but no, no, thank you. I'm going to not do that right now, <laughs> and you out that can definitely stress you out if we're talking commitments to other people uh you agreed to do something for someone else or you agreed to do something that would help work on a relationship and so in some ways this is not because a lot of times this is like self-made or or this is a perspective that's sort of blown out of proportion or is askew in some kind of way this I feel Pisces is like a burden like you know there have been things you needed to fix things that needed to be worked on things that needed to be rectified or 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 um made clear or given given attention to and that has burdened you like this is not traditionally a card of burden but I feel it for you now it's like a burden and when when you have burdens that's it thank you when you have burdens other people when they have burdens they feel stressed they get anxious they get tense they're they, they get knots all in their neck and stuff like that and that might happen to you too but what also happens with you Pisces is you become worried you get really really worried you get so like concerned with being a disappointment or taking on more disappointment like there's this idea of I didn't do what I said I was going to do, therefore this person won't trust me again. They won't believe 
they're going to get angry with me. Like you, be, you become a little worried that other people will have an abrasive reaction to you or a dismissive rejection based, uh, or rejection, whatever they will reject you. And so that's the way your burden is carried. It's not necessarily stress. You don't necessarily get super frustrated or angry. You get like up all night, eyes staring at the ceiling, holding back tears because you don't want to wake your partner up because they hear you're sobbing. You know, it's like that type of burden. Um, and in some ways it is self-made. You, you have a hand in that being your reality. But like I said, this is a cycle. And a lot of what your reading is about is this idea of acknowledgement, of seeing what's going on, calling a spade a spade, viewing things with clear eyes. There are bits here that don't have the greatest amount of clarity, but I think your big two here, Hangman and Death, working with each other, being side by side with each other, can really counteract a lot of that. If you choose. You know, awareness is half of the battle in my book. And like I said, Pisces, one of your greatest gifts is that you are so acutely aware. You are so regularly made aware, whether you want to or not. Whether you intend to be aware or not. You just get this awareness and this understanding of, oh, this is my problem. What you choose to do with that information is, is of course, I feel where, where, where the issue lies is what you choose to do with that information. But you can't, I feel you guys have access to information a lot more readily than other people and possibly a lot more readily than you might even realize or you might even be able to uh, appreciate sometimes, okay? Now your outcome, <clears throat> excuse me, for the month is the Hierophant in reverse. Card of Taurus, so there might be a Taurus in your situation, but it does not have to be. Uh, it's really about the card itself and the, or the energy itself associated with this card. And right now, this is hitting me as, for some of you, this is about a marriage. Uh, for some of me, for, for some of me, I'm not a Pisces and I am not married. <laughs> so anyway, uh, for some of you, this is about a marriage and it's a little topsy-turvy right now. It's a little upside down. It's a little uh, off kilter or there's something just not jiving in your marriage. And it needs to be addressed. I don't feel for those who are in this married or if not married long-term commitment. I'm not feeling this indicates a break. It might indicate a break in the sense of like a break in the energy, like a break in the flow of things, but not a break as in like a severing as in a separation or anything like that. I feel like the flow, the flow is disrupted. If this was like a wavelength or something, I don't, I don't even know why I'm using that. I'm not good at science. Anyway, but it's like a wavelength and it's like broken. It's, you know, a wave, I, I assume a wavelength is meant to be continual. And it's, it's most effective and it's most dynamic when it's continual. But when it's not, you know, you've got useless wave data or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> why do they, you show, sometimes they show me things. And I'm like, what the hell? That's not my realm. I can't, I can't talk about that. Anyway, so in that case, it's just a matter of, again, turning towards the problem, towards the towards the dissension, towards the disagreement, towards the misunderstanding and addressing it. For those where this isn't necessarily about a relationship, marriage or not, I feel like you desire some kind of normalcy and stability, which is what this card can represent in the upright. And you, I think you desire it, but it's sort of out of reach. Ah, okay. It could be that some of you feel let down by elements of stability or normalcy that you found in your life. So, for or you could never connect with it. So, for those where this was about behavioral changes, where you said, I'm not going to eat any sweets anymore. I'm going to cut back on this and I'm going to improve my diet. That's some type of pattern, some type of... Com 
commitment or 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 structure that you said you would commit to this in the reverse would indicate that either you were not able to commit or if you have been able to commit to it and stick to what the plan that you laid out for yourself you haven't gained the results that you wanted to so for some of you you might be thinking okay well i had this whole goal of going to therapy and talking about my issues and feeling better. I don't feel better. This is garbage or this is disappointing me or this has been a sham. I get it also a feeling of like a sham or something has been um, like uh, snake oil, like or used car sales and that's kind of what I'm getting here. So, because the Hierophant represents uh, systems and institutions that are in play in societies that are trusted, that are given power, that are given influence, that are that are deemed to be correct or deemed to be in control and having something, um, some some semblance of righteousness. So government, schools, or education. Uh, religion, things like this. In some cases, like the medical field or, or, or hospitals and doctors and things like that. So when you don't have trust in those institutions, do you really respect them? Like if you distrust also like banks. So let's say it was a bank and you've put in, and I'm not saying this is exactly your situation, but I'm trying to illustrate a point. So say you've been investing in this bank for years put thousands of dollars into that bank and you trust that the bank will do the right thing and keep your money safe. But then you find out the a new story breaks. Your bank has been, someone at your bank has been embezzling funds, you know, taking money uh, from bank members or whatever and spending it or, you know, in some ways gambling with it on the, on the markets and doing stuff and like dark trade and all that kind of crap. And basically you lose money. You've lost money. So your trust in this bank or your trust in this institution, which is representing people has let you down. You committed to putting X amount of dollars away from your paycheck every month. You were saving for something. You were, you know, doing whatever you had plans for what you did or plans because of what you were investing and those plans were shot to hell because the institution the trusted institution let you down so in some cases like i said this would be about a therapist your therapist lets you down you don't feel any better even though they're telling you whatever they're telling you they're giving you all kinds of homework assignments to to better yourself or better your your disposition and you're just like you've been doing this for a couple months and you're just like so this is not working and like i said for some of you this is about your marriage and marriage is an institution and, and it's tied to a lot of times religion or even government if you're non-religious and so some of you have lost trust in your marriage you're like i wanted to marry you five years ago and we did and i I don't know that I want to be married to you anymore. Or I don't know that I want to be in this relationship anymore. Or I don't know that I want to be in this relationship with the level of commitment or the idea of commitment in the way that we first interpreted it or we first laid that foundation. I'm like, I don't know if I believe in monogamy. Some of you might have that revelation, <laughs> you know? And so there's just a little bit of this distrust or lack of faith in your outcome okay overall energy oh thank god the heat came on because it was getting a little chilly in here anyway uh your overall for the month is the king of swords air sign gemini libra aquarius but it does not have to be it's really more about the card itself or the energies attached to it and this is about being honest being truthful and being stern in that truth, being firm in that truth. And I think that this would be like your advice. I think that this is something that you all know. And I said all, not even some or most, all. You all know this is something you can do, perhaps you should do. Will you do it? I don't know. This could be someone external to you who's giving you tough love and tough advice and they're kind of like not playing kid games with you. They're being very sharp 
and very direct in their conversations with you. And it could be that that is also the person that has hurt you. This could be the father who told you you're not pretty or told you you're not attractive enough. Come on, with the focus. Yeah. Nah, hold on. Something like that. Oh, to hell with it. But it's going to bother me. <laughs> there it goes. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, but this could be the person who has been sort of the thorn in your side or the person who you can't break away from completely or you can't fully rectify the situation with and you you are repeatedly hurt by this person or affected by them in some type of way. And so the, 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 the message of being direct and sharp would still apply. And in some cases... Pisces, sometimes you have to meet a person where they are to, to a certain extent. Like if someone's like on a super low vibrational level, they're, they're, they're like in the deep, deep depths, depths of negativity or ineffective, non-progressive energy. Don't do that. But if this person is on a higher level, mid to high level where they have reason, they have, if not all the time they have moments where they can be approached they have moments where they are open to criticism seek or seek and uh, pounce on those moments if they are completely ornery if they are completely inconsolable and if they are misery guts and they are just not approachable forget it but if they are the message that i said earlier about being sharp of being affirmed and 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 and, and poignant with your communication with your ideas with your feelings find your moment and go for it is what i'm feeling even if that person is a little sharp themselves even if that person can be a little uh a little biting with their words as well meet them at that level if they speak to you truthfully if if this is again like and i hate to keep saying father it could be a mother if this is a parent or anyone who's critical of you critical of your life critical of your uh of anything in your life, your physical appearance, your intellect, your choices, your, your, your inability to choose or your procrastination, whatever they're criticizing you on, not to say you should criticize them back, but you should be as stern and as sharp and as prickly or, or, you know, pointed with your conversation to them. So if your way of biting back is to say, well, you know what, I appreciate what you said, but I don't want to hear it again. I think a lot of people would I know you Pisces, I know you can do that. But a lot of people who don't know that side of you might be taken aback. So you might catch that person off guard by saying, you know, I appreciate your opinion, but you can you can keep it to yourself next time around. And they'd be like, what? I, I always, we always banter like this. We always talk and you're like, no, I really don't like it. I've, I've dealt with that the majority of my life. You criticizing me, you telling me I'm not making good decisions, you telling me I'm not pretty, you t whatever, whatever you're, whatever you're saying to them. And you finally put your foot down. This is an energy of putting the foot down and possibly up somebody's ass, if I'm honest. <laughs> but I don't think you would take it that far, Pisces. I don't think that would necessarily benefit you to be that aggressive with a person or to be that um, sort of... Uh, you know, <laughs> sort of uh, dog, not dogmatic, but uh, feisty with a person. But I do feel putting a firm foot down, sort of drawing lines in the sand or sort of making declarations of what's going to happen in this relationship or uh, going forward. You're not going to talk to me like this anymore. I'm not going to engage in conversations with you like that anymore. If you do that, I'm going to do this and sticking to it. And again, that, that has also been an a theme in your reading is sticking to what you plan to do. So this guy, King of Swords, that energy is definitely a stick to the commitment. I stick to the game plan type of energy. It's available to you. You can get into it if you want. It might take a little bit of work because it's probably not your natural inclination. But I'm telling you, it's there if you want it. Okay? All right, Pisces, that is your reading. For November 2018. Again, I apologize for coming out so late. I am just a regular lady. I don't have a superhuman superhero cape or anything like that. 
So please forgive me. <laughs> um, but if you like what you saw here, there's a like button below. Go ahead and smash that guy. Uh, if you like what you saw, you can also leave comments. I love to hear how these readings resonate with people, how you relate to them, how it affects your life or what area of your life it plays into. Please leave comments down below if you feel uh, feel compelled to do so. Uh, also down there, you're going to see buttons for sharing and subscribing. Do both of those, particularly the subscription if you're not already subscribed. And I will be back in about a week or two when I do your December 2018 general readings. I thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Bye.